strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Ah, God, you reign forever. I hope I strong. Well, hello and welcome to another devotion. Um, we are in the book of Matthew, and today I plan on finishing up chapter 9 uh, as we go into the next one, which is chapter 10. But for right now, this is chapter 9, verses 35 uh, to the end of the chapter through 38. Jesus continued going around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, teaching preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Let's pray together, shall we, before we go into, or as we go into the word today. We thank you, Lord, for your word and for your spirit that is so faithful in teaching us. Please give us ears to hear, minds that can see and understand, and character, nature, that joyfully is obedient to all that you teach. And this we pray in your great name. Amen. Well, this is how chapter 9 ends. And it's a powerful statement because as we saw earlier, uh, Matthew starts with chapter 5 teaching. He teaches in chapter 5, 6, and 7. When we get to chapter 8, there are various signs and miracles demonstrating the authority of Jesus teaching as well as him being the teacher. Then when we get to chapter nine, there's some more teaching as well as um, the uh, continued signs, miraculous signs. And at the end of chapter nine, then um, he kind of concludes uh, the various miracles and teaching that he was doing. And so this concludes really chapter nine does um, a section that 
pretty much started in chapter 5. And so let's just read it again. Jesus continued going around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues. So he's teaching Jews. Remember, God's redemptive plan originated, if you will, well, originated in, in, in Genesis 3. Uh, you can see with the... Um, the curse on the serpent that the human being will eventually cross the serpent's head. But specifically with regards to Israel with Abraham. Abraham um, is, is the patriarch, if you will, that God chooses to begin this, this history of redemption. It goes from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Jacob becomes Israel. Israel becomes a nation. I'm condensing it, of course. And so they are the ones that are familiar, if you will, with being the chosen people of God to be God's image bearers and to live within the kingdom of God and to represent, to be his ambassadors in this world. And through them, all the world will be blessed. All nations will be blessed. So through Israel, God will redeem all of the world. So that being their narrative, if you will, their history, their purpose, Jesus goes to their synagogues preaching, not something new per se, but a fulfillment. So in regards, it's new, but in regard, it's also fulfillment of what has been promised through their past. And he is teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, the good news of redemption, the good news that God is now going to move in this world in such a manner that the forces that have kept this world in, in pain and suffering and fear and death and shame, those forces are now going to be driven out. This is the good news. And healing every disease and every sickness because God has that power to do so. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. No one to take care of them, left to their own. That's powerful. Sheep without a shepherd, sheep by their very nature uh, require a greater being, if you will, to take care of them. We require a greater being to lead us, to guide us. The nature that we currently have, though, immediately rejects anybody trying to tell us what to do. And so, um, like sheep, we need that, but also don't desire that, so we reject that if, in many ways and try to take matters into our own hands, which eventually, because we're not designed to do that, messes things up. And so Jesus sees the crowds and compares them to sheep without a shepherd who are vulnerable, vulnerable now, to fear, confusion, disorientation, herd mentality. So he says to his disciples, which is a powerful statement. His disciples, those who are learning how to live in the kingdom of God, those that are learning and being transformed to have a nature that is obedient to the will of God, not as a matter of trying to, to white knuckle it. Well, I'm going to be obedient to God. I'm going to force my will and force myself to be obedient. But those that are the kind of people that are obedient to God from a place of habitual obedience, natural obedience, joyful obedience. These are the disciples. And he says to the disciples, the harvest now, now he goes from comparing the, the, the group as sheep with regards to the shepherd, the harvest is abundant. So there's a huge harvest. There's a, a, a great number of people, and they are abundant. But the workers are few. Now, the workers go in, of course, and harvest what is there, and they bring it in. This is the key. The workers of the harvest are those people that go into the harvest and bring the harvest into the barn, if you will, that bring it into its fruition, that bring it into its final destiny. The workers are meant to find people and bring them into the kingdom. 
However, the way into the kingdom is through discipleship. So Jesus says to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the workers, those who are disciples that are able to bring people into the kingdom are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. In other words, pray to the Lord to increase the number of disciples that in order that, that through those disciples, they too can bring more people into the kingdom simply by way of being a disciple. One can inspire people into the kingdom of God through discipleship. It's not a natural thing. It's still God that brings them into the kingdom. But God can only bring them into the kingdom through discipleship and that by means of disciples themselves. And so at the end of this chapter, chapter 9, it becomes a summary of the importance of disciples and discipleship. Again, verse 37, he said to his disciples... The harvest is abundant. There are so many people out there that are longing and waiting, and my Father is longing and waiting for them to come in and to be gathered into his presence. But the workers, those who can actually bring them into the presence of God through discipleship, are very few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest because they are God's, to send out disciples into his, heart, into his harvest. It reinstates the importance of discipleship. Discipleship is um, indeed a lot of work. It is worth the reward, by the way. Um, there are many times in Scripture where Jesus refers to the rewards of discipleship. Sometimes you have to think not only the rewards of discipleship, but the price of non-discipleship. Do you want to live your life, your entire life, being subject to fear, being subject to shame, being led by guilt, being led by accusation? Do you want to live in that reality? Do you want to live with that nature? Or would you like to be free? Because those who the sun sets free are free indeed. So my friends in Christ, as we come to the end of chapter 9, it is once again the importance of discipleship. And my prayer is that we are learning together, disciples together how to live in the joy of the kingdom and to hold on to God's promises and to be those kind of people that wh wherever and whoever we run into naturally are being affected by our discipleship so that we become the light of the world, the salt of the world, but also the workers of the harvest. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you and keep uh, his peace to be with you as we grow in our faith, as we grow in our grace, his grace now and forever. Amen. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.